Hi everyone, welcome back to our alumni spotlight interview. And my name is Ted, and I'm one of the volunteers at the leadership team uh, at the Biotechnology Assurance Society Club. Today, I'm going to interview Cody, who is working as a quality assurance technician at the Kuprasar Mexican Food, and she'll share her experience throughout their professional journey. So let's get started. Hi, Cody, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good too. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so my first question is, how did you end up with your first job in the field uh, right after graduation, including their interview processes, uh, the hiring process or like application process? Yeah, I graduated in 2018 or in April. Okay. And then I was in Toronto that time. And then my family in BC. So I was looking jobs related to quality assurance in BC. Oh, and I just yeah. apply when I was in Toronto, but I didn't get any response you know, from the oh. employer. And then finally, I moved to BC in June. Oh. And then I keep on applying mm -hmm. when I moved to BC. And in July, I think 3rd of July, I got first job related to quality control technician at the oh. first choice food. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a distributor company, like they are a distributor of spices, lenticles and dry fruits. So I started over there in 2018, July, and I end up that job like around in December. And, oh, okay. and uh, mm -hmm. almost six months I work over there. It was a good company. It was mm -hmm. my startup company. I learned a lot of things, but uh, they are not doing much testing because it's just distributor. They are not manufacturing, but I learned regulatory uh, affairs and documentation, some testing. Okay. And I started at a minimum wage that time, and it was oh. so surprised. Yeah, because when I moved from Toronto to BC, and Toronto minimum wage is more than BC, and I was oh. getting here is less. Oh, I was yeah. so shocked! Like yeah. in the field and getting a minimum wage and too much work because it was yeah. very tiring day, eight to four thirty, and it's mm -hmm. only one QA over there because it's very small company. Mm -hmm. And so all the paperwork and lab testing, everything is handled by only one QA and too much burden over here. Oh. And it was so tiring day. And I don't like the environment over there. <laughs> and then I was, I was keep on trying, looking other jobs. And then I have to go to India for family business for one month. So oh. I just quit the job. And then mm -hmm. after one month, I came back to Canada. And then I start looking a job. And I stayed there like all, almost in uh, one month. I didn't get any responses. I keep on applying when I came yeah. back, mm -hmm. but I didn't get any jobs over there. And then finally, after a couple 15 days, I'm getting interviews. Mm -hmm. I'm getting interviews and then uh, and then I got the job in Capasa oh, in Kipasa. 2019. Yeah, in 2019, mm -hmm. Feb. Mm -hmm. And... When I jo joined Kepasa, before that, I'm getting three, four more job offers from other companies. Oh, at the and same time? And then I have, at the same time, oh. same day. Oh. In the morning, I'm getting the offers from Kepasa, and the evening, oh. I'm getting offers uh -huh. from other company. And oh. some company pay me well, too, because I got mm. some experience. Yeah. Before oh. that, I don't have any experience, and nobody is getting mm. you as a fresher, right? They Everybody mm -hmm. wants yeah. experience. That's why I just yeah. started right away, because... I was on work permit and I need to get a job related to my yeah. field. So mm -hmm. I just joined. That's why that job, even the salary was very low in my first job. Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. surprising yeah. for me to start at a minimum wage <laughs> because once you've done like diploma in biotechnology mm -hmm. and getting minimum wage mm -hmm. and spend how much money on the course, you know, that yeah, so I know. it was yeah. terrible. And, but it was good experience. And then when I, I was not driving, so I was I chose Kepasa, which is closest to transit. Oh, and uh, it's easier for me to commute. Other companies are a little bit far. They're, even they're paying good, but yeah. I chose Kepasa because it's closest to my home and easy mm -hmm. for communication. Mm -hmm. So I joined in 2019. And mm -hmm. because Kepasa is totally different from First Rice Food because they are oh. manufacturer of Torias chips. Oh, and nice. they have a lot of testing there it's a very mm -hmm. big company they have two three plants in us too and mm -hmm. they have five to six qa techs they have like 24 hours production 
and seven a day is very busy. Oh, seven. <laughs> seven days and seven we need to days. work on weekends. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of overtime and mm -hmm. the first day of job was so tiring for me because a lot of lab testing because I was not like experienced in lab testing at first choice food because they are distributed. It's totally different, right? So yeah. I was doing a lot of lab testing over there. And mm -hmm. it's a new experience uh, because it's hourly check. Then you have to write down the results manually as well as on the computer. You have to enter the data yeah. right away once yeah. you've done the testing. Um, mm -hmm. But it's good like one, two weeks after training of two weeks. I'm mm -hmm. good enough to work independently. Yeah. Oh, and nice. it was, yeah, mm -hmm. it was good. It was morning shift because so I need to wake up early in the morning because sometimes we need to do pre op. So we started at 5 a.m. Oh, 5 so a.m. 5 a.m. <laughs> and then you have to do like pre op for the swabbings in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. It's only like oh, on Mondays because sometimes they closed on Sundays. So they have to do early morning pre ops. Okay. So otherwise mm -hmm. I have always a morning shift, but it's once I used to it, I'm fine because it's six to two. So you finish early. So you have whole day free, right? After yeah, two o'clock, yeah. you, you can, can enjoy the in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like after three, four months, uh, my manager quit. And oh. it's, yeah, so there is no support for managers then. But that time, it was a good time for me because I learned so many things the documentation mm -hmm. before that i just yeah. working on the floor it's mm -hmm. only lab testing hourly mm -hmm. checks process controls how the process is going on but mm -hmm. i don't know much about like uh, how to update the sops mm -hmm. like i participate in internal audits the sq audit because we are certified sqf level two mm -hmm. and then it's a good experience i learned that time when she quit so they didn't find any manager for almost for three months after that and then finally they found in june but mm -hmm. that three months i learned a lot so i yeah. learned all the paperwork <laughs> because of our yeah. senior curie also quit so there is no senior oh and the one and there's another girl so mm -hmm. in the morning shift they have other seniors in the afternoon night shift but there is no senior QA quality technician oh. so it was yeah. a good for me for good yeah. learning right <laughs> yeah good so, experience <laughs> Yeah, I, I like that time was very good for me. Mm -hmm. And then once she joined and I'm the one trained the manager, the new manager, because <laughs> I know how the activity is going on. Yeah. And because once you indulge, you know that otherwise, if you're a manager, you're just doing your regular mm -hmm. jobs. Right. And then yeah. at the end of the day, you can just go home after two o'clock. But yeah. once there is no, no senior, no manager, so you have to take some decision. The production is not good. If the product is not good, it's in compliance. So we need to hold in products. So I have to take all decisions independently without any supervision. There is a plant manager, but still the quality manager was not there. So you cannot mm -hmm. call every time a plant manager or supervisor. So yeah. it was really good experience. So I learned all mm -hmm. the documentation. And then mm -hmm. I have done my HACCP certification. Kepasa mm -hmm. helped me to have the certification because I'm the backup of my manager. Because uh, then I promoted to quality tech too, because I'm mm -hmm. handling the office work as well as the floor, the jobs mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. So because I know all the uh, documentation too. And yeah. then I participate in SQF audit. I prepare all the documentation requirement for the SQF, update the HACCP form because I was HACCP certified. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and then it's a good, so yeah. internal audit. And then they, they are using a software IFS. So I learned that software to trace back the products. So if oh. there is a recall, mm -hmm. how we can trace back that product because this is overall products, everything, whatever we're shipping, we are using a software called IFS. Mm -hmm. So it's a good learning. Then how to order lab supplies. I'm the one handling lab supply, the calibrations, the monthly mm -hmm. trend analysis, the shelf life studies all this work done, the lab testing, everything I'm, I'm doing that time. So it's a good learning for me. And I gain a lot, but then they like, almost I finished over there like four years. So it was so nice. And then I just, I went to India for my wedding. And so I took mm -hmm. off recently in March. 
So now mm-hmm. I'm doing in Kepasa part time, and now I'm struggling to find some better opportunity like key manager because I already have experience. Yeah, yeah, for exactly. four and five years, and yeah. there is no growth in Kepasa because it's a quality technician. There is no mm-hmm. massive coordinator, only key manager, and you can't wait to get manager retire and get the position, right? <laughs> yeah. So it should be some growth. So yeah. nowadays it's very hard to get uh, mm-hmm. jobs. you know yeah. the recession is going on yeah. yeah so i'm just struggling for that one i am looking for coordinator jobs i went for mm-hmm. so many interviews waiting for the results but mm-hmm. uh i want to just try to manage it. even i uh, went for a cfi interview too mm-hmm. as a food inspector developmental meat inspector so that's yeah. also going on hope so i will get Yeah, you will. Get... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Will. But it was a good. Yeah, but it was a good experience. So yeah. I. Uh, so this was my journey all in Kepasa and first choice. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So were you in a core program when you, you were at school or not? Uh, when the when I was a student. Yeah, when you were a student, were you in a co-op program or just? No, I, I didn't. I didn't take any co-op. That's why I was struggling more. to get yeah, a job because exactly. if you have a if you are co-op mm-hmm. student you can easily get jobs because some of my friends they are in co-op and then mm-hmm. easily they got in either in sg uh, sgs lab they are working in sgs yeah. or bv labs mm-hmm. because they did the co-op training over there and our yeah. professor ivan henry helped them a lot to get the yeah. job Oh. because she was keep posting and she was so nice keep posting mm-hmm. on linkedin i saw and she she helped me for editing my resume she personally yeah. sat with me and she added the resume so it was a good oh, but i, I feel it's better if you have co-op training yeah so mm-hmm. to get the job easier but i was not that one but i got that time chance to start with a small company and once you get the experience then you can switch to different industry so Uh, you can switch in between the different industry either in the meat or either, either in the food plant based yeah. yeah so the first job is the most important one right yeah. first is the most important <laughs> one to get first yeah. it's very important because you don't have experience nobody going to trust you to give you a job right everybody yeah. wants at least 6 to 12 month experience mm-hmm. so if yeah. you have co-op training they know that you already worked there right so you can yeah. easily get the job Yeah. When you got the first job, uh, did you meet all the job requirements of the hiring positions? Like, uh, they usually mention the job requirements and education requirements in the job posting, right? So yeah, education requirement. Or... Yeah, education requirements are meet, but not the experience one because I only have experience in the lab, right? The practicals yeah. which we have done. Yeah. But it's totally different in the industry. So industry experience mm-hmm. is different than you what you have studied. Yeah. But there is some knowledge you can use it like pipetting and the titration mm-hmm. method, but not the all requirement. Whatever you learn as a student is the same in that industry. It's totally it's a different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. That you only get mm-hmm. if you are in co co-op. Co-op. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, at Quipar- at Quipasa now, like, what does a typical working day look like as a quality assurance technician? Like, uh, what kind of lab works or what kind of yeah <laughs> yeah it's a typical i was doing the morning shift so mm-hmm. they are making their manufacture of tortilla chips so you have every hour checks like the moisture because the chips right what's the moisture content inside the chip mm-hmm. and the more important the salt like sodium mm-hmm. so you are using a titration method and we have oh. sodium analyzer too to do the testing mm-hmm. and every hour the salt content how much salt so they mm-hmm. have a sensor you have to collect it and weigh it how much salt it is and then you mm-hmm. have two ccps uh, have like hexry and metal so you are checking mm-hmm. every hour verification make sure the project uh, the product is rejected all the band is rejected if it's not rejected you have to stop the production you have to check the last acceptable check and then product on hold and then you can release the production and then all the documentation return filled up by production people and you it takes every verification every 2 hours and then how you have to check the lot code dates make sure the dates production date it should be matching and then in, beside the testing then you are doing receiving also because we are receiving every day a uh, raw material a corn mm-hmm. and calcium hydroxide salt whatever in- ingredients needed for the making mm-hmm. of chips 
so that uh, inspection also doing so inside inspection and testing and then other calibration we are doing monthly so whenever you have because qt q almost two qt tech per shift so one is taking care of lines another one is doing other shelf life studies calibration and rotation basis they are doing job they are changing the duties oh okay. yeah but it's tiring it's, if you are alone and two lines running <laughs> you have to do all lab testing and receiving yeah. and it's a lot of it's tiring yeah. for the first time if you start first thing like i'm used to it four years is almost too much yeah. so i'm fine with doing all multiple jobs oh and all of them are in the laboratory environment right in the laboratory they have lab a small lab and we have qa office upstairs in the mm -hmm. like in the plant they have one small lab with the production going on And we have a big Q office upstairs where we have a computer. So the data mm -hmm. where we have to enter a shelf life study and front analysis, we are using that computers. Oh, I see. So you have to do up and down, like in the lab. Mm -hmm. Once you finish the lab testing, you can go up, enter the data, and then coming back oh. see the production and walk okay. around the production. Make sure everything uh -huh. is uh, yeah. like GMP. They are production people mm -hmm. following good manufacturing practices. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you need to check. Like everybody is wearing a uniform, nail cutting, no hair, oh. wash their hands. Yeah. yeah. So GMP, make sure everybody follow GMP. Like that's very important food safety, washing oh. hands. Yeah. That's and nice. if they have, because in production sometimes they have temporary workers, right? They're coming mm -hmm. every day, a different yeah. person. So mm -hmm. we are giving training GMP for five minutes training. They're gonna mm -hmm. watch a video and then after that. You personally gave the GMP training. They went through all the points, make sure they are following their uniform, and their mm -hmm. everything the GMP they are following. Yeah. Oh, I see. And so, since uh, since you are since after your graduation, what kind of technical skills or transferable skills have you used most? Like the transfer, I use the technical skills which mm -hmm. I learned from the in the school when I was a student. Yeah. Like the mm -hmm. lab, how to do titration and mm -hmm. the weighing scales, how you do accurate because we need to weigh and mm -hmm. uh, other lab lab skills I use basically the lab and the lab skills I yeah. use for that. Otherwise, oh. transferable skills didn't mm -hmm. use much. Yeah. So, uh, lab skills from especially from the chemistry lab that we for the chemistry the lab from the chemistry mm -hmm. lab. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And... Because micro, they are not doing micro anything. But mm -hmm. I think so. If some companies they are doing in-house micro testing, where you can use your microbial skills. Oh, uh, but so, our mm -hmm. our Kepasa, we are just taking the samples. Like we are doing every month environmental sampling to make sure the air there is no contamination in the air. Right there is no. Yeah. So we yeah. just uh, they are like the BB lab send the prepared labs with the agar. Mm -hmm. And we have to just put it in the areas which are prone mm -hmm. to like the contamination. And just yeah. after fifteen mm -hmm. minutes, we have to take out the plates and send it to the BB lab. So main testing is done at BB lab. We don't have equipment for testing, so we don't need a microbial skills and but yeah. uh, chemistry skills we needed how to do titration, the weighing, mm -hmm. all the stuff. Type yeah, analytical yeah. skills. Yeah, analytical. So uh, also the chromatography and. Some other Chromatic, chemistry. Yeah, chromatography in some if mm -hmm. some lab they need it, but in my company we don't need chromatography. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, because so, I saw some mm -hmm. post things. Uh, they mm -hmm. need GCMC chromatography and this gel filtration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I have experience for chromatography because I have done masters in biophysics from India, so oh. I'm very good in chromatography. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, what are the differences between uh, differences or any similarities between the college courses, lab courses, and the actual free work, like in the lab? Industry yeah. is totally different. To be honest, <laughs> what I learned at the school, because if you have like if you have industry experience, then it's a good like you work up, right? Because yeah. industry is totally different from the the knowledge you have that oh. in the labs. Just the skills you can use, but not hundred percent is matching. It's not similarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can study. You have an idea, like because we we are doing uh, different zones, right? Zone one, zone two, like the food contact surfaces. Mm -hmm. Like 
that you study in your study or in your micro studies right what's zone yeah. one what's zone two zone three a basic background yeah. knowledge but yeah. not a hundred percent just a background knowledge you can use in your industry mm-hmm. but the actual skill only you learn if you work in industry otherwise you don't know because it's totally different because i did biotechnology and i am working in food manufacturing so mm-hmm. it's different so i didn't work in biotechnology company maybe mm-hmm. where you can similarity over there yeah. but here is totally different or if they are student is from food mm-hmm. science maybe mm-hmm. their skill is should be matching with our industry but what i learn in biotechnology mm-hmm. there is no i didn't feel any similarity oh so yeah. uh, after we get a job what are the must of theory knowledge or practical skills to land a job successfully i went so many interviews for now right so nobody going to ask any thorough knowledge about me nobody going to oh. ask me how much gpa you have it oh. <laughs> i don't know some big companies biotechnology no idea but food technology companies they they not going to ask you experience in the starting they ask but thorough mm-hmm. knowledge a little bit you can use the background but mm-hmm. yeah i don't find to be hard here oh i see yeah And- because i was not even mm-hmm. i don't know what hasap is even i study mm-hmm. but we, you know when you are studying you are not focusing much right on the skills yeah. <laughs> once you are in industry then you ha- you have practical <laughs> skills then you yeah. learn more things right when yeah. you are doing that thing then you learn if you are yeah, not doing yeah. just studying you cannot learn the skills yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so practical <laughs> skills are very important in the thorough knowledge for my oh. information yeah i feel it mm-hmm. and like any certification or any training yeah any training certificate that you will suggest uh that will help students uh, like more sec- to get their uh, secure jobs yeah if you are hasap certified you can become you have more option you can become hasap coordinator mm-hmm. and maybe you can have sqf certification too to become a sqf practitioner either a qa manager so these basic uh, certification and you can do first stage because then you can get a first stage position in the companies too mm-hmm. and i feel it then occupational health and safety certification is also important because there is a lot of posting and they need that mm-hmm. license too so yeah. these basic cert- certification is necessary hasap is very important to have it yeah mm-hmm. it's two day course it's very straightforward mm-hmm. and easy and there is if you want to become a peer manager then they have mm-hmm. another certifications Uh, SQ of one PCQI, a small oh. certification. But once you yeah. enter in a industry, the company mm-hmm. will help you grab all the certification. Like HACCP certification, my mm-hmm. company oh. pay me for that. They need it, right? If they need it. Yeah. So if you become, if you're gonna stay in that company for five years to become a QA manager, they're mm-hmm. gonna help you for getting the cert certificate license. Oh, okay. if you wanna do it before the, getting the job, that's well and good to have a HACCP certification. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. And when you say occupational health and safety certificate, and that that certificate name is occupational health and safety certificate, or is that ah uh, OHS? It's OHS. Yeah. Oh, OHS certificate. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Health yeah. and safety. It's like if you want to mm-hmm. go in that field, right? Because you have yeah. to explore different option too. Because mm-hmm. QA tech, because there is not much growth to be honest in the food companies. you can become mm-hmm. qa tech and then has if you has a certified you can become a has a coordinator and then qa manager right so if you yeah. have another certification like health and safety because it's a part of safety right food safety mm-hmm. health safety so you can yeah. secure more jobs if, yeah. if you can do it mm-hmm. it's it's good to have more certifications there is no bad thing yeah no harm if you want to do it there yeah. is no harm to have certifications yeah. mm-hmm. it's a advantage and... to get a job Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and okay, so this this is the last question. And like, what advice would you give for networking strategies to the students? <laughs> for networking, networking, mm-hmm. networking is very important mm-hmm. because you can get referenced because yeah. some companies they hire you on basis of your reference, a good reference, right? Yeah. So they will help you get a job easily because. Uh, in Kepas, I have some references before I hired, so it's mm-hmm. good for me to grab a job. And if you have a connection with your professors, like mm-hmm. uh, I was talking about, Avon Henry, she has a lot of connection with the companies, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So she gonna help you to find a job mm-hmm. for uh, fresh graduates. Mm-hmm. It's very good. Mm-hmm. 
because I saw I was on LinkedIn and she was added been on me layer. I was following her, right? She was keep on posting. There's a hiring over here, hiring over there. Mm -hmm. So it's so good to have the connections. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's easier to get job. It's not bad. Yeah. And what kind of networking strategy do you usually use? Uh, what uh, I feel LinkedIn is a good networking. Yeah, make your LinkedIn so, account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. post your resume. It's help uh, to find out a job. Oh, and also reaching out to the uh to the peer profession to the professionals and the recruiters. Yeah. Uh, recruiters, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And professors to and join the. Uh, in mm -hmm. a centennial also they have a help for counseling like for the resume editing yeah they're mm -hmm. helping that seminar yeah. you can attend yeah. it yeah and there's a webinar also you can attend webinars food safety webinars some mm -hmm. like some companies giving you free webinars for food safety it's good to attend that one so you have an idea of that one yeah oh okay mm -hmm. yeah webinars mm -hmm. uh thank you very much Cody for giving an interview to us and yeah thank you so much for your time <laughs> okay thank you so much have a good yeah. day yeah have a good day yeah. that is incredible and i'm sure that your journey will have students a lot in their transition from academia to the industry and i really hope to stay connected with you in the future as well yeah for sure no problem thank yeah. you <laughs> yeah thank you yeah okay bye-bye yeah bye-bye yeah. okay, yeah. so that's that's the end of our alumni spotlight interview and thanks for watching the video. And if you're interested in more contents like this, please hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel.